Hello Yum Church. It is a beautiful day outside. The sun just came out and we're here, Jen and Sean and I, to talk about a decision that Ministerial Council just made on a recommendation from Mennonite Church British Columbia. MCBC, two years ago, after the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in Canada, um, suggested and encourages all our congregations to acknowledge that the land we're on, here in the Fraser Valley, is not originally our land as immigrants that came in, as settlers. And so as Ministerial Council, we've decided that we're going to adopt the statement that we'll put on our website and we'll put in our bulletin and we'll acknowledge at some um, appropriate events that we host that we're on land that wasn't originally ours and it hasn't been given to us. Um, it's not our fault and it's not to make us feel guilty, um, but as Steve Heinrichs from Mennonite Church Canada says, we didn't choose to be born into a colonial state and a church that's participated in that. We didn't choose that we would be part of dispossessing indigenous peoples as, as settlers, for our own well-being even. But we need to feel the responsibility and bear our part of the burden for the history we've inherited. And so uh, we want to have a bit of a conversation about that. Um, in February, Jen initiated this conversation with Ministerial Council after MCBC had suggested this a couple of years ago. And she just asked, could we put this statement in the bulletin? And she talked a bit about in her email why this was important to her. And so I thought we'd ask her today a bit more about that. So Jen, why as Christians is having a statement acknowledging this hasn't been our land always, uh, why is that important for us? I think that for me, I, the, the church, and especially the Mennonite church, is a church that focuses on reconciliation and peace. Um, but oftentimes we think about it as peace and reconciliation out there with other people. Yeah. Um, we think about other people having conflict or other people having taken land from one another and how do we come into those situations. But the reality is, as we think about our own context and sort of what we can do here where we are right now in our own lives, the reality is that we have the same kind of situation here. We just are so often blind to it um, and our everyday lives. We, we just go about our own, our own life and our own, what our own responsibilities that, that we all have and that, we are, that are good but um, we forget that we have our own history and because we're not the ones who are suffering from it, it's really easy to forget. Um, and so I think that that's why it's important to have these kinds of statements that just remind us what, uh, where, what our role is in this and that we're not the ones who are suffering from this, but it's our responsibility to try to keep it front of mind, to try right. to find ways that we can reconcile. Yeah, yeah I think too is, like Jesus primarily came for these four directional relationships, right? To reconcile us to God, to each other, within ourselves and with creation. Mm -hmm. And so this is the basic step to acknowledge we weren't always here. Yeah. And the process of how this land came from your people, like that's in this case, the Stolo nation, having used this land and taken care of this land before we came, but now we came in and we, weren't part of a conversation with them or, or we were if we were a part of it it was more taking not genuinely dialoguing mm -hmm. um, we were just informed that it was here for the taking exactly um, but we didn't realize at the time uh, that that it really wasn't yeah yeah mm -hmm. so now it's our responsibility to learn and understand better how do we how do we acknowledge that relationship ultimately yeah. rather than just ignoring exactly that so yeah. Sean, do you have any thoughts too? And how do you come? How, how have you stepped into this? I mean, the conversation about reconciliation in Canada only came on the radar in the last bunch of years, mainstream. How have you engaged with this? Well, I think. I mean, I, I, I can start with how I how I first sort of gained awareness of this. I mean, I grew up in Winnipeg, where where we lived on treaty territory, um, which is obviously a different. Um, different issue than it is here in BC where there were no treaties signed and I think my first awareness of that sort of relationship came when I went to work up north in Nunavut oh. for two summers and 
it was the same situation up there where I was going into what was essentially an indigenous community as a white settler yeah. um, and, and working there for a summer and, and, and coming to the realization that this was still their land that, um, that I was fitting into their cultural paradigm and that sort of just it gave me it gave me an awareness of 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 some of those issues that I that I didn't have living right in Manitoba yeah. or that I don't know if I necessarily would have had yeah. living here but it just yeah. sort of helped give context to hmm. some of some of the issues and and helped me understand why this is an important step yeah awesome Thanks for sharing that. Um, as we journey and, and learn about and participate then in this path of reconciliation in MCBC and um, here in Miero and in Chilliwack, we'll continue to make the con congregation aware of uh, the different opportunities and kind of the different small steps that we can take to not necessarily add a new missions program or, or start some new venture, but rather make those small changes in our lives to live more justly, to have relationships with our neighbors, in this case, that are indigenous, that have been here for a long time, that are First Nations. Um, and how do we learn to live more justly and participate in reconciling the past and reconciling the future? Um, so, thanks for being part of this. <laughs>